Hey, what's up guys? This is Guy here. Welcome to this live and today we're going to talk about ESXi and Synology. I'm going to explain to you how you can connect your ESXi host to your NAS so that you don't have your VMs stored locally on the ESXi host. You can save them or have them stored on the, on the NAS. That's what I've been doing in my lab. I'm going to show you my lab very quickly. And I'm going to give you the advantages of doing that kind of setup. What are the benefits? What are the benefits that you get? And we're also going to uh, to do that on here manually. I'm going to show you in my lab environment how you can do it to get that to work. So I'll have some things I'll have to undo because I just did it in French not uh, long, not a long time ago, like an hour ago. But then we'll do it in English. I thought I was showing myself here, but I was actually not. I'll have to cut this first um, the first part of the video. Welcome and welcome to the channel. For those of you that are watching us on Facebook and YouTube, say hi on the, in the chat. And I see we have a couple of people here on YouTube as well. Hi, Olivier. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. So that is what we're going to cover today. Just as I, just like I said, it's going to be about. ESXi and Synology. So I'm going to show you my lab environment and we'll show you how to implement the same thing. It might be in production, it might be in your lab, but it's always good to have your VMs saved elsewhere. So you can lose your host, but you can still recover your VMs from the NAS because it's, it's, it's not, I'm sorry, it's not directly related to the NAS. I need to get some water here. All right, thank you so much. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is show you my current lab. I'm going to show you my lab. I just uh, shoot some videos before coming on here. And the good thing about the, the NAS is that because I shot the videos with my phone, they are directly uploaded to the NAS, so I can show you the videos right here. I just shot it before starting this video or earlier today. So this is my, this is my ESXi host. It's a um, it's an old desktop that I transformed. So right now I have ESXi um, version eight installed here. As you can see, it's just somewhere sitting under my stairs, and uh, it has 96 gig of RAM. And this is where I run most of my stuff. These are the two Dell servers that uh, I was using before, but right now they are shut down. I'm not using them. And if you look at this desktop, um, on the back I only have a single cable, and the cable is right here. This is the single cable going to my home network, and I have a bunch of VLANs in here. So I have a, I have many networks coming in, and uh, from here, it goes to my Fortinet switch, and then is connected to whatever network I want to connect it to. And I just realized I need to make this whole look a little more beautiful. So this is my current ESXi host, and I just want to show you that. So right now, I have an SSD inside the ESXi host, but it's only there for, for the OS. It's there for VMware ESXi. That's where I have ESXi installed. I have nothing else on that. I'm gonna show you the my, my ESXi really soon. You're gonna see that I only have the system data store and then I have the NAS. Everything else is on the NAS. Then let me show you the NAS right now. This is my current NAS. It's a Synology NAS that is sitting on top of my... Uh, of my uh, what is it? My rack. As you can see, it has six bays and I do have 32 terabyte there. You can see my Fortinet devices. And I have a 10 gig connection between this NAS and the home network. That's one other thing I need to tell you is that you need to have a good speed between your NAS and your SSI host. In my case, I have uh, 10 gigabyte. It's good. But you can try to, at least one gigabyte can work, but the more you have, the faster it's going to run. So it's always good to to uh, make sure you have enough speed. And uh, the 10 gig is what I choose to go for. Um, it works fine for me. I've never had any problem. Um, and then you just need to make sure that your NAS is always up because if your NAS is not um, available in your network, you won't be able to access your VMs. So the VMs are going to crush if the NAS is all of a sudden disconnected. So we're going to do that today. I have one quick thing I have to do here to prepare for this. Let me just finish that quickly here, and then we're gonna keep going. Let me take a look at the chat and see see what you guys are saying there. Um, okay, I think I'm ready now. All right, so I should be ready. 
Um, hi, Mills Mboko. Maintenant, je suis en train de travailler sur ce lab. OK, you're working on the lab. That's good. Uh, Joel, Essen or Joel? Good day, bro. Where are you continuing the Fortnite infrastructure videos? Um, I'm going to continue with a lot of Fortnite in the future. So I, I do a lot of things here. I mix systems, networking, security, and all of that. So Fortnite is definitely in the queue, and I will be making a lot of videos. Like right now, I've been playing a lot with SD1. That's something that I think I will be able to create videos. Um, next Sunday, we will probably talk about SD1, SD branch, and stuff like that. So stay tuned. All of that is coming. All right. So what I want to show you today is my ESXi environment. This is my current ESXi server. As you can see, I also have an ESXi VM running inside my ESXi host client. My host client is here. We, I have, uh, this is the, these are the, the capabilities of my server. This is the CPU memory. And if you look at here, capacity it shows 32 terabyte. And the 32 terabyte, it's not local. It's, on, it, it's in the NAS. That's why it's always good to have something like a NAS. You can also use a SANOS uh, storage area network, but that's more sophisticated. It's more like for data center environment. Me in a lab like this, it's fine. Even a small or medium business, you can just have a single NAS and it's going to be fine. However, a single NAS can be a single point of failure. That's why in my case, I'm not only having uh, using a single NAS, I have two of them. Let me show you. If we come back to this video and I continue the video, this is my second NAS. It's a QNAP NAS. It has 24 terabyte. So every night, all my data is copied in the QNAP NAS. Right now, the QNAP NAS is not the main NAS. It's a secondary. So I have, uh, I have the backup sent there every night or I have files literally just copied or synchronized every night. As you can see, it's connected to another uh, Cisco switch. And the Cisco switch that you see there is the one I have over here. I'm watching the game, actually. I just see that Avery Cost is now leading the game, which is crazy. Um, it's uh, the final of the African uh, Cup. All right, so the, the, the cable you see here is the one that goes all the way back, connects to the... Uh, um, to the switch you have in this video and then connect to my uh, backup NAS. So that's one thing. Uh, let's go back to the NAS. Okay, here I have a lot of um, VMs and if we go under storage, you can see that I have two storages. I have the NAS and I have the system. The system is the local SSD that I have on the, on the, the host and the NAS is connected remotely using NFS for that one. You have many ways to connect. You can use NFS, which is fine. It works for me. It's uh, it's fast as well. Or you can use iSCSI. I've, um, I don't use iSCSI in this environment. Comes with some more benefit, but NFS works for me and I'm fine. So um, here we have the NAS. And what I want to show you here is how to do the same thing with this ESXi server here. As you can see, the IP on this is um 10.35 try here 10.35.0.124 and that's where we're going to connect here we are already connected 10.35.0.124 and this is what i currently um have in this nas not a lot i only have like uh actually i don't have any storage configured yet that's why it says not available or not applicable or whatever and uh, this is the memory uh, locally, just 8 gig. I don't have any VM running on here. It was just created for this lab. So what I'm going to do is add my NAS to this ESXi um, host. And I'm going to show you right here how to do it. So first of all, what are the advantages of having your VMs in the NAS instead of saving them or storing them locally on your host? First of all, you increase your storage space. Just like I showed you, in my NAS, in my current NAS, I mean, my current ESXi, I have 32 terabyte available. I mean, which, which, the one that's available, it's like 18, uh, 18 terabyte. So I have 18 terabyte available because I was able to connect to the NAS. If I want to have 18 terabyte available on the local ESXi host, I will need to buy disks. I will need to buy um, a whole infrastructure to make sure that I have enough capacity. But now I already have a NAS for my home network. I will just connect it or point it to the NAS and that's all I need. I have the NAS available for storage. The second thing is that 
you make your management very easy. It's so easy to manage your VMs, to manage your data when you have everything centralized in the NAS. So you centralize everything and it becomes very easy to manage. And then the third advantage or benefit, which is actually to me the most important, is that you have a recovery system, like a restoration of your data. If you ever lose, if something happens on your ESXi host, you can just destroy the host, rebuild a new host, and connect the host to the NAS. You have all your data available. It's more about data recovery, backup, or disaster recovery, all kind of stuff. And just like I said, the NAS can also be in redundant mode or in backup mode, just like I have in my environment. I have the main NAS and I have the secondary NAS. They, both, they work together and it's fine for me. So those are the advantages. Now I'm going to show you how to configure that on your server. First of all, you need to make your NAS, your NAS ready. Me, I have Synology. I'm going to show you based on Synology. If you might have, you might have a QNAP or anything else. And just make sure it can support NFS. And to make sure you support NFS, you need to go in your NAS and go under, like in my Synology, you go under Control Panel. As you can see right here, under Control Panel, you can, um, you can go under File Services and then make sure NFS is enabled. In my case, I have all of these enabled. I have SMB is the main one that I use, the main protocol. Um, AFP for Apple devices, I use this as well. NFS, make sure you check enable and then you select the version 5, I mean the version 4.1. This is the most recent version, a lot of security, and it's really good. So we have NFS enabled. That is the first step. The second step is that we need to define the shared folder we want to share with the NAS. In my case, I am going under shared folder. As you can see here, I need to share the folder names VMs, uh, named VMs. This is the one I'm going to share. So make sure you have a folder to share. If you don't have any, you can create one. It's also good. You can create a brand new folder if it's the beginning. But my VMs folder is already linked to my existing NAS. So I don't have to do a lot of, um, I don't have to create a new one. And then when you have your uh, shared folder here, make sure you go under edit. And then under permissions, you need to make sure that you have a user that has access or read and write access to this NAS. And this user will have access, will be able to log in from the ESXi and read the folder. So in my case, I have Gibisuku right here. So Gibisuku has access, read and write access to this shared folder. And that is the first step. The second step is to go under NFS permissions. Under NFS permissions, this is where you list all the devices or all the ESXi, all the different hosts that should have access to your NAS. In my case, you can see the 10.128.0.2. This is my current ESXi. It's listed here. If it's not listed, you're not going to connect. You're going to fail. So, and if you understand, what we have to do now is add our new ESXi host. I'm going to hit create and then give it the IP 10.35.0.124. And all of this can stay the same and hit save. You also need to save again here for it to work. If you forget to save, it's going to be a problem. And there's one piece of information that we need here is this, the path volume. Make sure you copy this because you will need it in your ESXi. In my case, I'll just do a right click. I'll copy this and that's it. I'm going to hit save. So now I'm ready to go on my ESXi host and connect it to the NAS. As you can see, if I go under storage, I have nothing. There is nothing here um, in terms of storage. I need to go under new data store right here. So I need to go under new data store. And from here, I can select these different options. I have four options, create new or add or expand or mount NFS. Just like I said, I'm using NFS, so I'll go with mount NFS and then we'll click or select next. And now I have this table where I have to provide this different, um, this different field. The first one is the name. I am going to name it NAS Remote. Oh my God, did they just have another goal? Is it the third one? 
Audrey, c'est le troisième but. Ok. All right, so um, I'll go with Nas Remote. And then um, here we have server IP. I'll give it 10.35.0.5. That is my uh, Nas IP. And then on the share, I'm going to put that information that I copied, the path to the share. It's volume one VMs. And then on the version, I'll go with the version four. As you can see with the version four, it's going to ask me a username, which is guy or Guy Bisuku. And the password, I'll just log, um, put the password in. And that's it. So from here, I'm just going to go next. And it's going to uh, confirm all the, inf the information I put in. And then I'll just do finish. Once I do that, as you can see, now NAS Remote is available as a storage Uh, space NAS remote is available and I'm able to go under um, data store browser I can see all these different folders these are the folders that are shared between my main NAS that is here if I go under uh, storage go here data store uh, let's see uh, data store browser you can see the same folders so That is how you do it, as simple as that. And now my new SXI, let me show you. I can go in the new SXI and go under um, host. And you can see that I have 17 terabyte available here. This is how you can just link your NAS directly to the ESXi host. Hi Mills, depuis le Congo. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for watching. And uh, if you like this, don't forget to like the video. I think we're done for today. That was it. That was what I was trying to show you. And uh, let's go on Facebook and see if there's any comment. Hi, Passion Fenton. Thank you so much, Passion, for being there and for the support. I like your comment and I like everything you do for, for the channel and for me. Thank you so much. So I think we're done for today. That's how you can do it. As long as you have that configured, you should be able to go ahead and use your files from anywhere. In some of my future videos, I'm going to show you how I sync all the files from the phone to the NAS. It's very convenient and very cool. And you'll be able to do that on your own. Thank you so much, guys. I think I'm done for today. I'll see you next Sunday or sometime in the middle of the week. Take care and bye.